This just might be my easiest ham radio installation yet. Check this out. I have been itching to update my HF rig for quite some time. I have a Yaesu FT857D in the car. It is 17 years old and the radio still works great. But as I want to dabble with digital modes a little bit, I, I kind of thought that getting a newer radio would make that task a little easier. And I wanted something with a larger display. I considered the IC7100. It is probably functionally the closest match to my FT-857 with 13 bands, all modes, uh, 160 meters all the way up to 440. But instead, um, you know, and I could have installed that in the car and made it look really good, but I just didn't want such a bulky display. I like where my displays are up nice and close to my line of sight. And I wanted something that the 7100 has kind of an awkward display that's great on a desk and can be useful in a car, but I wanted something that is small, similar to my 857. So here's my 857 remote. I wanted something that was of similar size, but with a larger screen. And I think I got that with this radio here. This is a Yaesu FT891. It is very similar to the 857, except that it does not have UHF and VHF. And that's okay, I have a, uh, a dual bander in the car as well, and I'm not removing that. So I'm losing um, two meter and 440 single sideband and other modes if I were to choose to use them. My 857 is not going anywhere. I will keep it and perhaps use it for rover duty. So uh, you probably haven't seen the last of that radio just yet. So let me give you a look at what's, what's in the box here. I don't really wanna make this an unboxing video, but I'm also not going to make it a full install video either. Uh, but I am going to show you why this will be the easiest install I've ever done, I think. So let's see, we got the uh, warranty card. The manual, I might keep this in the car. I have a, a digital version of it on my smartphone and got to have the sticker. I'm not going to put it on anything. Uh, here is the body of the radio. Very similar in size to what I already have. I'll get back to this in a minute. The mobile mounting bracket. This is the exact same bracket that's used with my 857. So I don't even have to take the bracket out of the car. <laughs> it's already grounded in my panel and everything. And so uh, I'm not even going to use it. I'm just going to pull out one transceiver and put in another. That's part of the reason why this is going to be so easy. And then here is the display. And as you can see, the display dimensionally is very similar. But when you look at the size of the LCDs, you can see a huge advantage over here on this side. I do like larger displays. My eyes aren't terribly old just yet. I can still see my display and pick out all my functions. Although sometimes I do look under the under my glasses like an old man, I suppose. But uh, I like the larger display because this also shows more. So I think the fonts are a little larger, which of course is nice but it shows more detail and information, particularly on the SWR and power output. So that's important to me. Let's see, I'm gonna set both of these over here. Power cord, this will be cut before you know it. Microphone, I'm not gonna go with the uh, DTMF microphone this time. I don't need it. Uh, HF bands typically don't have use for it and I think I can do pretty well with just a standard mic. So I'm gonna stick with it. Spare fuse, I think, and some hardware. This is for mounting the radio to the mobile bracket. And this is probably some screws for mounting the mobile bracket into the sheet metal of the car. And I don't need, I'm gonna use these uh, because they're better than what I have in the radio right now. I do not need these because my mobile bracket is already mounted. So there you go, that's the unboxing. So my display, I have already done a little bit of destruction here. This is for the uh, 857 and it was mounted uh, or glued, I should say in here. You can see some adhesive still on there. And uh, household goop is wonderful because it holds well, but you can also peel it off. And so uh, it peeled off. I peeled it off before um, 
before shooting the video. So uh, uh, you're missing out on a little bit of my discovery. But it would have been so cool if if this would mount to that. Ah, it was so close. It, it Like right there, you can see that it, it does go in and it'll clip on, but only on one side, right? It's They don't quite line up the same, but that would have been awesome if I could have used the same bracket. This has a quarter 20 uh, screw receptacle on the back, I guess for like what you would find on a tripod. And so I'm gonna to try to find a way to make that work with my existing display. So I think I can put a fender washer back here and then a spacer in the front and then mount this display, whoops, right side up of course, right above where my uh, ID5100 is. So check this out. I mentioned earlier that the mobile bracket is exactly the same. And I'm also going to use the same extension kit. It uses all the same extension hardware. So all I have to do is just unplug stuff. Now, obviously, I won't be reusing my VHF UHF connector here. I got my data ports to disconnect. And I can't reuse my power cable either because this has a uh, a six pin connector on it. So I will have to restring the power. And then up here in the front, I forget what these are for. One of them is microphone and the other one is data. And so they, uh, they too are compatible with the new unit. So that's nice that I won't have to run new cabling anywhere. Now the top clearance on this is very low. So there's not a whole lot of room for ventilation here. But now that I'm looking at this more closely, the ventilation appears to be situated so that it can breathe around the faceplate. So this is the unit I'm pulling out, so it's almost like this is unimportant, but the new unit is very similar. Let me just put them down side by side. See, so the new one is just a slight bit little, a little bit shorter, and the fans, this vent up here doesn't matter at all. The fan will just blow right out there. So it doesn't matter that I don't have any top clearance. Actually, it's the other way around. It gets sucked in through here and then blown out through the back. So uh, yeah, none of that matters. I'm missing my hardware. Can you believe that? I don't think it fell anywhere. One of the challenges of working in a mobile environment is things get lost all the time. So uh, that hardware package will show up just as soon as I have replaced it. The show must go on. All right, so now we hook up the power. And so this is gonna be a temporary hookup because like I said, I I will be cutting this, this cable to fit exactly how I want it and where I want it. And that may include cutting the fuses out of it. And that's okay because I'm wiring this into a fuse panel already. Both positive and negative are fused and that's the way I have it set up over here. So we'll, we'll be all right. So this is a temporary setup. So this will not be my best work. So all I'm gonna do is remove the FT857 wire and install the FT891 wire. My radio, my new faceplate is now mounted inside of my existing visor. When I park at hotels, the radio is very easy to remove, or I should say this display uh, setup is very easy to remove. I have my, my little plugs are right here. These are for the, oh, I forget what they're called, RJ12, I think. Uh, that's for these. These are for the display connections and then I just run little extensions in through the panel and then they feed into the displays themselves and you can kind of see this one here and the one for the 891 is in the back so you can't see that and then these little magnets here these are adapted from the ID5100 display and then I have those set up to fit onto this uh, bracket here. And so this is a pair of the ID51 display brackets. And let me see if I can get that in there without looking. It's, uh, it's a little tough. So basically it just sets in there. The magnets grab hold. 
And then I have these color coded so I know which one is which. Uh, this red one here was formerly for the 857, which has a, an orange display. And so that was why I colored it that way. And it's on top. So then that just plugs in the top there. And then once that's done, I can just flip the switch and everything turns on. First impression so far? Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> so this is not going to be a first impressions video. This is just a swap the transceivers video. I will follow up at some point with uh, first impressions of the transceiver. I'm going to mount the antenna and go out and do some operating and see what I think of the radio overall. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to answer. Again, this was just a transceiver swap video. I'll, uh, I'll talk more about the transceiver and my Gosh, I guess I got to update my uh, my ham radio video to show what's in the car. I've I've done a lot of work since I published that video so long ago. So uh, yeah, I'll get to work on that. So thanks for watching. Take care.